Hello from Islands of Adventure. I'm at Islands of Adventure to continue a series that I've been doing on this channel. Today, I'm letting the Rock'em Sock'em robots determine my day at Islands of Adventure. Okay, well first I have to assemble my Rock'em Sock'em robots, which are the rugged red rocker and the bruising blue bomber. All right, so I have my Rock'em Sock'em robots assembled and how this is going to work, it's going to be very similar to how I use the Hungry Hungry Hippos game over at Animal Kingdom. I'm going to tribute a ride or a food or a souvenir to each respective robot. It's going to be a confrontation of just how I spend my day today and whichever robot is victorious over the other robot is going to determine what I do. Looks like me ship the olive is closed today but I'm heading inside the park awkwardly with my little rock'em sock'em robots and I already know the first question that I'm going to ask. So the first question that I'm going to ask is where am I going to have lunch? Because it is very late in the afternoon and I have not eaten today and I am hungry. All right, so I can't over the water so I can do my first little rock and sock and robot showdown over here to decide where I'm going to be having a lunch. It's going to have to be between two places. So here's also a bit of a situation. I did not bring my tripod uh, like I did for the Hungry Hungry Hippos challenge that I did. So I'm going to have to try to find a way to prop my camera up and still actually do this. Ah. So this is going to have to work. I propped the camera up inside of like this rock. Uh, so I think that red is going to be, I think, Circus McGurkis, just because I haven't legitimately eaten there in a while, and then blue is going to be Comic Strip Cafe, because I don't even remember the last time that I've eaten over there. So this is going to be a little bit weird just doing this, not being supported by anything, but let's see what happens. Oh, okay, so blue one, so I'm going to the Comic Strip Cafe, hooray! Did that work? I hope. That's the rock that I shoved my camera into. I need to look at the menu for Comic Strip Cafe just because I have not been there in a while and I'm pretty sure that they've changed the menu. I'm hoping that it's open. I'm presuming that at least during spring break it's open. That's where it was, just right over there. And I think I've decided that it's going to be between the Char Sui Ramen and then the Meat Bulgogi Ramen that they have. So I'm going to go ahead and go back, I think, over here to go and do that. Not having a tripod definitely added a different level to this challenge that I wasn't really anticipating, but I think I can make it work. All right, so I wedged my camera into this gate over here by Marvel, and I'm having to do this awkwardly at waist level, but the blue robot is going to be the Char Sui, and then the red robot's going to be the Beef Bulgogi. Are you ready? Oh! Wait, what happened? I'll have to watch the replay! So upon review, the red robot got it by that much, so I'm getting the beef bulgogi for lunch way over in the Comic Strip Cafe in Tulaga. Alright, so I put in my mobile order for Comic Strip Cafe. This is actually very exciting because I have been wanting to eat here for a long time. Alright, so I made it to Toon Lagoon. I'm heading inside the Comic Strip Cafe. I'll probably be exploring this area a little bit more after I have some food. So I'm sitting way in the corner of the restaurant over here. This is the entrance to Deadly Two Rights Ripsaw Falls right there. And this is my beef bulgogi bowl, which is beef bulgogi ramen with tonkatsu broth, tare egg, bean sprouts, scallions, and cilantro served with an egg roll. There on the side I have a fortune cookie, and then I brought a Coke from home. There's actually a lot of seating in here, and it's a little bit past lunchtime right now, which is pretty understandable, but that was cool, just finally getting to eat inside here again. So now I'm heading to find another place to use this, and I already have an idea of what I want to do. I would like to, surprise, spend some money. So by spend money, I'm over here by this abandoned theater in between Toontown and uh, Marvel Superhero Island. I brought this game play pass card that I consistently have forgotten bringing this to Universal and I finally remembered it. So what I want to do is either use this to play a carny game here into a lagoon or just to go inside a store and just buy some sort of a souvenir. So I think that red is going to be um, playing a carnival game and then blue is going to be just buying a souvenir outright. This is not the best quality game. Oh, okay. Well, blue one. So I'm just, I'm just buying something. That's the Comic Strip Cafe. And then again, here's the stage that I've never been inside before and may never get to go inside, which is fine. Uh, but these are where all of the carnival games are that would have been fun to do, but it also would have definitely been a bit of a challenge just not having anybody to help me record or a tripod to do as such. So I just came down the steps and the games that they have over here, they have a balloon popping game, a basketball game, they have like a little, uh, what would you call that, like a water squirter game, another basketball game, and then a whack-a-mole game. So I have another chance, maybe in Jurassic Park. There's some games over there, but I really like this. Woody, this would be a really fun game to do over here. There's actually a lot of fun little prizes to win. 
and a pretty good chance to win them too. This one has SpongeBob and Patrick and Mr. Krabs and Plankton, and then Blue and Magenta from Blue's Clues. Over here, this is a whack-a-mole, and then there's a bunch of these like little Care Bears. All right, so heading inside the shop right now to go ahead and get some sort of merchandise. A good editor never sleeps. That is true, and you know why? Because imagination is more important than knowledge. According to my fortune cookie. There's not a door over here. So I walked around for a little bit inside the store and I think I found two pieces of merchandise that I am between. So I've always wanted this shirt right here. So I'm considering this. And then also right inside, over here, there's like a SpongeBob section. And I was considering this shirt right here as well, the Krabby Patty shirt. But what if I got this hat? All right, so I'm going to try to find a spot over here somewhere where I can use my little robots. So I literally have my camera right here on the fountain. So red is going to be the Krusty Krab hat, and then blue is going to be the green Universal Orlando Toon Lagoon shirt. Are you ready? Red one. I get to get the hat. Yay! It's actually been really interesting just to try to find a spot to put my camera, and that's been just the most bizarre, fun part of today so far. But I'm heading back over here to get my uh, my hat. I will come back for that shirt at some point. But how cool is this hat? I literally saw somebody else getting this hat, and I was like, I need that hat. I was looking at the shirt. I didn't realize there was a hat until I saw somebody buy it. So I have my Krusty Krab hat on, and I'm feeling super cool. I'm even wearing an Islands of Adventure shirt that I forgot about. And now it's time for my next, um, I guess, decision to be made by my Rock'em Sock'em robots, which is, should I ride a ride? Or if I do ride a ride, which I think I am definitely going to ride a ride, what kind of ride should it be? A regular ride, like a coaster, or a water ride? It's currently spring break season, so neither really is an incredible option. This looks like it's a pretty long wait right over here. I'm sure that all the water rides probably are. All right, so I walked over by the Olive, which is currently under refurbishment. I'm going to walk over here and try to decide what I'm doing next. So I think that I am in between and trying to decide if I should ride a roller coaster or a water ride. So that'll be the first question that I ask and then when I decide which one of those I'm going to be doing, then I'll try to narrow down to what specific ride I am going to be doing. It also might be raining somewhat soon, so that might impact whatever ride that I end up doing as well. So we'll definitely see, but I'm heading somewhere down over here to try to decide. Okay, so the red robot is going to be, I guess, a roller coaster, and then the blue robot is going to be a water ride. So am I going to ride a roller coaster or a water ride? I'm getting tired. I'm riding a roller coaster. That's good. Right? I didn't want to get wet. I'm wearing a new hat! As far as the roller coasters, it's going to be between, I think it's going to be Velocicoaster and Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. There are a lot of coasters at Islands Adventure, but just these two in particular, they're the ones that I would want to spend my time waiting in line for, at least. This would be super appropriate if Dooley Dragons was still here, because of fire and ice. But I guess Velocicoaster is going to be the blue robot, and then Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure is going to be the red robot. Are you ready? Makes my hands really tired. I'm riding Velocicoaster! That's convenient because it's right here. Almost been a minute since I've ridden Hagrid's, but it's also been a minute since I've got Velocicoaster, I guess. I'm not sure if I've ever been able to get this perspective of Velocicoaster. Just literally right up by the water, right underneath it. Just because when they were doing testing and adjusting and technical rehearsals, they were always having this area sort of closed off, so just to be able to be over here as close as I can get to the Lasso Coaster, it's actually pretty cool other than being in the line, literally right there, which is also pretty cool. It's about to jump right through. That's so cool. It's about to be me in just a few minutes once I make my way over there. Of course, the Incredible Hulk roller coaster would have been a really good roller coaster to do as well, but as far as being a single rider, it would have been between those two. No really expectations that either of them both have an open single rider, but I'll try. The West weather has already started to approach the area because I have not seen a wrap on this in a while, but I haven't seen cars in Velocicoaster, so maybe not. Right over here is still the most cruel location to get wet on any water ride at any theme park. You just get absolutely so completely soaked. It's just, it's really mean. It looks like a pretty delicious sandwich. Somebody should recreate that at some point. 
But I'm on my way over to uh, Jurassic Park. See, this could have been refreshing over here, but this might have had a pretty monumental wait right now. It's just again being spring break and also pretty hot. It was very cold last week and all of a sudden it's hot again. Over by Skull Island Reign of Kong. I don't know what the wait time is for this, but I'm bypassing it for now. I haven't ridden this in a little while. I remember when this opened and I waited in the extended queue like all the way back there. That was quite a memory. There's no guarantee that the single rider will even be open for Velocicoaster, but I'll find out. I'll try to decide if I should just wait for it to open if it's not open or just get into the regular line depending on the wait. So pretty much all of the rides have actually been in between about 15 to 30 minutes today, which has actually been very reasonable and pretty cool. So let's see what the wait time is for Velocicoaster. I've not checked the app. These are the little carnival prizes over here in Jurassic Park that I I was thinking about doing maybe earlier, but we'll see. I think I definitely prefer the ones over in Toon Lagoon as far as the prizes. The crowd's getting a little bit thicker over here by Velocicoaster, which is posting a 75 minute wait. So Velocicoaster is a 75 minute wait. It looks like the single rider line is open. All man decisions. All right, so I decided to go and get into the single rider line just to see how long it takes. It's backed up all the way here for the regular queue. And this is where the single rider line ends. Express Pass was recently added to this, which is why it's probably a little bit longer than it normally would be. Okay, so I just got off the Velocity Coast Street and ended up being only about a 30 minute wait for me in Single Rider, which compared to a 75 minute wait is not that bad. Okay, I'm heading into Potter. Now that I've done Velocity Coast Street, let's see if we can get some sort of a snack or something. It's pretty funny because that was probably a very quick transition, just me walking into the Velocity Coast Street line and then suddenly being back outside again. But. Yeah, I waited about 30 minutes for it, and it was a lot of fun. I got the very back rope. It's only a 10 minute wait for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey right now, which is pretty wild because it is spring break. And the crowds certainly feel like it, but there's not really a wait time for it. So I'm turning back around to get a treat, some sort of a snack, I think, from Honey Dukes. Right now, Hagrid's is a 60 minute wait, which is, uh, yeah, that's that's also pretty tempting. So what I think I'm going to do in Honey Dukes is I will ask my uh, my little rock em sock em robots, should I get like a, a, a sweet snack, like an actual made snack, or like a packaged candy snack. Which I have absolutely no idea where to do this somewhat privately, so I'm heading back here, I think, to try to find a spot to prop up my camera. It's a little bit more quiet over here, behind Honey Dukes. Alright, I'm confident that a team member is about to walk by and I'm going to be embarrassed to oblivion, um, but the red robot is going to be like cupcake or brownie or fudge and then blue is going to be like a candy. Alright, I'm getting a, a candy, like a packaged treat. I just perched my camera right here on this window ledge and it worked out pretty well. So now I need to try to like condense the candies that I might want in there and then uh, try to decide which one to get. Okay, so I'm pretty torn in terms of what I would like to get, what I'm thinking about is either jelly slugs or birdie bots every flavored beans but i've had both of these before so should i do sweets that i've not had before like fudge flies or peppermint toads okay i've decided what i'm going to do and i need to head out of hogs to do that never mind i'm going to go all the way over here because i could just put my camera right here on the little edge i can actually put my robots on a flat surface now so this is going to be a multi-part uh i guess round of this so i'm going to decide if i should have a chocolate or a fruit uh candy and then I'll decide it from, from there. So the red robot is going to be a fruity candy, then the blue is going to be a chocolate candy. Ah. Okay, so I'm getting a chocolate candy. So now the red is going to be the f frogs, the toads, and then the blue is going to be the flies. Oh, my hands, I'm getting tired. Somebody win. Okay, I'm getting the totes. See, this works out because I've gotten those other snacks just so often. So it'll be nice to get something a little bit new and, and different this time. All right, and I got my peppermint totes from inside Zonko's slash Honey Dukes. That's always fun to watch. But I'm going to go ahead and go try these. These sound pretty good. I don't think I've ever had these before. All right, I'm right around the corner from the entrance of Hogsmeade and I have my tiny little uh, peppermint frog. Peppermint toad. That is awesome. See, this is definitely like the quantity and size of chocolate frogs I'd prefer to like a massive chocolate frog. Although I really want all of the collectible hand cards. That would be really cool. 
to eat all those because I was just right over there, sort of behind that wall. These are somewhat a little bit disappointing, actually, because they're not like chocolate coated peppermint candies. It's it's just complete chocolate, um, but it, but it's almost as if there was like a vanilla extract added to it versus like peppermint covered in chocolate. That is a relatively mild complaint about these because otherwise they are very good. I just anticipated them being a little bit different, but I'll get them again. They were good. All right, so I'm walking through the Lost Continent. I'm going to try to find a place over here to ask one final question to my Rock'em Sock'em robots, and that's probably going to be what final ride should I ride on my way out of the park. So I'd like to ride a ride in Seuss Landing because I have not done that in a while. So red Rock'em Sock'em robot is going to be the Seuss trolley behind the sky train ride. The name of which I get right sometimes, then most of the time I don't. But then the uh, the, uh, the the blue robot is going to be Cat in the Hat. Are you ready? Okay, I am riding the uh, Seuss trolley high in the sky train ride. Yeah, that's cool. I haven't done that in a while. So you have to think about it because I it, when you attribute like a certain, you know what I mean? It's I did that. Put that wave there in the corner on that ledge. The Mystic Fountain here in the Lost Continents, over by the abandoned Sinbad Performance Stadium Theater. This area needs a lot of love. Overall, I was actually really impressed and happy about the crowds today. For a busy spring break season, it's not bad today. A while ago, Brenda mentioned that she really wanted to come back to Mythos because it's been a while since we've been over here and had dinner. And we definitely need to make that happen. It's been a, a long time since we've eaten a Mythos, and it's such a good restaurant. There's the high in the sky Seuss trolley train ride. I think I got the name right. And I hope it's not a lengthy wait at the moment. There's Dr. Seuss up there, and it looks like they are running both sides of the, the, the ride right now, because it's only posting a 10 minute wait. So it really doesn't look like there's much of any line at all, which is pretty pleasant, because this line can get very long, contention on express. Look at this extended queue. This is absolutely going to be a walk-on right now. There's currently nobody up there. I don't remember the last time that I've done this with like pretty much nobody. I mean there's people like walking to the queue, but in terms of just walking straight to the ride. Oh my god, it's dark. All it's the queue that it was just in. Right there. Oh, this here is I am. The this for the first time in a while. This is closed right now. I think it's only open for a month probably. I'd be near me right now because the, uh, the mic is on the front of this camera. It's sort of challenging to listen to myself think because this narration is ridiculous. There's like almost nobody in the streets right now, which is pretty cool. This is wild! It's like not busy at all today. I don't get that. There's the incredible Hulk roller coaster. There. The sun is starting to set. I should be able to make it out of the park by the time the sun sets. This is the wildest narration. I don't even know what is happening. Can you hear this? And there's other track way over there. Isn't that cool? And then there's Universal Studios. We stopped for just a second. And now we're moving again. This is such an incredible ride. I can't believe it's been so long since I've done this. That was it, my final activity of the day. There goes our little train, and here's the other one that's pulling up right now. This is the longest walkway to get back down to the bottom level. That was probably one of the most, just, just as far as challenges that I do, one of the most natural challenges I think that I've ever done, just walking around a theme park. Like these challenges where I have to decide between two similar but opposing decisions to make. Like, they're silly, but they are definitely the most successful, I think. So with that, I'm heading back to the parking garage to go ahead and head out of the park by the time it gets dark, which is actually not that far away because of uh, daylight savings. Brendan and I should have a little date, hopefully, at Universal coming up at some point soon and all of our plans work out. So that'll be fun to do. Maybe we'll have like a little nighttime experience at the parks. Who knows? Or maybe an early morning experience. It's still so interesting. The crowds are pretty big and then the wait times are not. And I'm very okay with that. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing the challenge that I did today at all of the parks, like I've been doing the Magic 8-Ball challenge. I think I'm just going to be sort of just finding like a fun little game like I've been doing so far and just maybe do it at one park because I think that, that would stretch it out a little bit 
little bit too much if I tried to use every single one of these little miniature games at every single major theme park. But you never know if I happen to find a game that just works really at any theme park that I might commit to that. It's just sort of fun to play around with these cheap little versions of of games and just see if they if they work and enable me to have a different day at a theme park. That's the goal of this. So that was my day at Islands of Adventure as determined by Rock'em Sock'em Robots. I ended up having lunch at Comic Strip Cafe, getting a dish that I'd never had before I got my hat. I got this Krusty Krab hat, which was an impulse purchase. I rode the Velocicoaster. I got some peppermint toads. I rode the Seuss Trolley train ride. I had an incredible day. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad that I can have days just exactly like this, where I just get to be impulsive and have a good time, even by myself, even with a silly little game. So thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Have a great day and goodbye.